Thank you. Good morning and uh, good afternoon for everybody. My name is Laksana Adianto from Brass University. For the last 20 minutes, I try my best to pack the presentation about uh, SPC viewer. So uh, it's divided by three sections. Uh, one part is the introduction of SPC viewer. Second is how to use SPC viewer. And the last one is the demo. I will not demo on the remote. Somebody will be angry. I have to do the demo on remote. So I will do the demo on the laptop. Okay. So you have seen that uh, John uh, already mentioned uh, SPC Viewer is the last part of SPC Toolkit workflow. You already collected the database from SPC Prof and SPC Prof MPI. And now the trick is how to analyze the data. The data can be very huge and complicated and is hard to analyze. And here we will show the tricks how to find a performance bottleneck. SPC Viewer is built on top of Active RCP, which is itself based on Java 11. So on, uh, I think on Slack, somebody cannot run SPC Viewer. In fact, it's because uh, it runs on Java 8. Uh, it's available on most platforms like Mac, uh, Windows, Linux, x86, PPC, and even ARM. Uh, pay attention for the Windows users. Windows allow you to run Java 32 bits and it doesn't work on SPC Viewer 64. It's not supported anymore. The old version of SPC Viewer support JVM 32, but uh, the latest and greatest SPC Viewer not. And it's not tested yet on Apple M1. I'm not sure if it works. Uh, never know. So, SPC Toolkit database has four dimensions of four information. The first dimension is the call path, which is uh, the union of uh, all functions, loop, statement, uh, executive. Um, and John mentioned about the profile, which is a list of threads, MPI process, open MP threads, P threads, uh, and even GPU streams. Uh, Karen already mentioned about GPU streams and view it in the uh, trace view. The third dimension is the metrics, which is uh, SPC run events. Every time you specify SPC run does E something, and this something is a matrix. And it has two types of metrics. Uh, I think somebody asked about uh, Rishi uh, about E and I. So the exclusive matrix uh, prefix, uh, suffix by E is the quantity of the matrix measured for a scope alone. The inclusive one is exclusive matrix plus the cost of its children, right? And uh, the time dimension is available if you run SPC run with dusty option. So there's a lot of information in the database. And the trick is how to navigate and find performance bottleneck. It's not easy. It requires good, sometimes good knowledge of the application itself. And sometimes it requires attention to detail. Uh, next. So uh, Susan and uh, Helen already mentioned uh, about installing SPC Viewer. It's already there. Uh, to be install locally, you can download uh, from our website. On Mac, for Mac users, please download with curl program to bypass Apple Gatekeeper. Right now, SPC Viewer is not uh, certified by Apple yet but it is in our priority list. You can also build a command line, even on Windows, you can build it, it's open source, as long as you have Java and Apache Maven 3.6 on your, on Linux, you can use Spark install. And launching SPC Viewer is very easy. It's just type SPC Viewer. On Mac OS, you can type open spc.app, you don't need uh, to go to content and etc. Just type open SPC Viewer or click the icon. Uh, I'll do my best to be uh, 
interactive. So if you have questions, please uh, interrupt me. Any questions? No, okay. So there are two modes in SPC Viewer. The profile mode that presents uh, the summary of application performance with different perspective. You can see from the top-down fashion, you can see from the bottom up and the flat, I will describe uh, soon. And the trace view that uh, present program traces in a top-down fashion. So this trace view is new. If you uh, already know SPC Viewer or SPC Toolkit, long time ago, a uh, yeah, few months ago, uh, there are two application independent, SPC Viewer and SPC Trace Viewer. But now SPC Viewer is integrated into one uh, uh, application. So here I want to make sure that we are in the same page about the terminology. Some per uh, performance tools have the same words but different meanings slightly with us. And some tools have different words for the same meaning. Uh, profile view has three views, <laughs> three perspective. The top down that present the dy dynamic calling context in which cost will incur. Uh, the bottom up present the cost by looking upward uh, along the call chain, and the flat view present the cost based on the structure of the application itself. So if you have an application. Uh, the main routine call F and then call G and then not, uh, call another instance of G and then, and then H like here on the left. The top down will present exactly the same where the function is executed. The bottom up on the other hand, look upward along the call path. You have a function, for example, I want to know uh, who call H, the bottom up will show you all the call chains uh, from the main to H. And the flat view is to present the cost based on the structure of the application. So if you familiar with Intel B2, I think uh, the bottom up is similar to the colors view, Intel B2 colors view. And if you are familiar with uh, uh, Oracle uh, PA, the flat view is similar with the top down, something like that. So different tool has different term, but basically they're almost the same. Now uh, uh, the top down, John already mentioned uh, there are two part of the uh, section in the SPC viewer, the source pen on the top and the bottom uh, is, has the tree and the matrix. This is an example of NWCAM. I don't know whether there's NWCAM developers here. So uh, in the NWCAM, you can see by using the climb button, you, uh, it will drill down uh, the tree to find a performance bottleneck. It calls uh, from program root, main, and then loop, and the task, uh, and another inland function until uh, the CCSD uh, routine. So uh, we have seen this. Uh, the bottom up is one of my favorites. It's very useful to find what is the most, the highest cost in my functions. So to do that in, uh, in bottom up view, you have to click the exclusive matrix and it will sort based on the cost. So in this NWCAM, we can see that the six most, the six costliest function are communication. The first two are from a Cray communication library, GNI underscore something. Another four or five is from GasNet library. Uh, well, this NWCAM uh, database is collected 
uh, five or six years ago and may not be the same with the right, uh, current NW cam. And maybe NW cam right now is, is much more efficient. But five or six years ago, the NW cam has significant uh, communication costs. So if we are interested with the uh, gas net barrier try, which costs 43% of the total cycle of the application, you can select gas net barrier try and click the hot button and it will drill down, go down. And we find that gas net barrier try is called by GA group synchronization. And GA group synchronization is called by GA underscore destroy. And which is called by NS task. So NS task is called by many functions in NWCAM. So every time the code give me a, a, another task, give me a next task, give me a next task, it calls GA destroy and GA destroy called synchronization, synchronization called barrier. So it's very um, in a person way to uh, get the new task. Maybe uh, people from NW can, can explain better than me. You can interrupt me anyway. So this is John. I'll just add that the, the next task was the, the way that uh, using the global arrays programming model, they were dividing up the work. And so uh, the implementation of the next task, as, as Lexano said, was was uh, pretty costly. And that's what we see here. OK, thank you, John. OK, so uh, I have only 10 minutes. <laughs> the flat view. So the flat view is good to uh, know <coughs> the list of libraries. Uh, the most costly libraries, like if you want to know the overhead of communication library, IO library, or OpenMP library. Okay, and you can also create a user defined matrix. Uh, there's a question in the Slack Is it possible to create a new metric? Yes, it is possible. For example, in the database, you have puppy total cycle and puppy floating point instruction uh, at the time uh, puppy has. Up, uh, up, uh, a preset to approximate the floating point instruction in uh, uh, Intel. So assume that puppy total cycle has metric ID 2040A and puppy floating point instruction has metric ID 2050. To compute the cycle per floating point instruction is 2040A, dollar 2040A divided by dollar 2050. And there uh, you can see the new column uh, called CPI, right? So the dollar is to is a pointer to, uh, like uh, in the spreadsheet like formula is to uh, uh, refer a pointwise value of a metric at a node in the tree, while the at sign is the aggregate metric. Another very useful feature in SPC Viewer is the metric property. You can see in current presentation uh, previously that uh, the, sometimes the metric label is not very descriptive. Like for example, GPOOP, uh, what the GPOOP means. So you can click the view and show metrics and you can find that GPOOP metric is the sum of the rank or threads of inclusive GPU time for all operation in seconds. Okay, so this is very interesting because sometimes the metric label is not very descriptive. And you can edit the label if you want here in this window, or if you have derived metric, you can edit again the formula. Okay, um, now the trace view. I did my best to pass. So the trace view uh, show by John and Karen uh, has the main view, uh, the Top to the bottom is the rank or the threads or, or GPU stream. And from the left to the right is the time. Here again is example of NWCAM database. Uh, you can see different regions in NWCAM and different paces. 
and uh, on the bottom is the dev view where you can see all the call stack across the current display time range in a specified rank. So if you see the crosshair here, then the dev view is the call stack in this rank 193. On the right side is the, the list of call stack of this crosshair. So you can uh, pin, uh, can check the call stack if you move the uh, crosshair. And another very useful features is the summary view where you can see the projection of number of calls across the current display time range. And it is useful to see the load imbalance. And the status view is the proportion of number of samples. And you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, and then you can also uh, save the current uh, region into the disk. Uh, you can do it again for the next uh, SPC Viewer instance. Another thing, the caveat in SPC Viewer is that the color is generated randomly. So if today the color is blue, tomorrow when you run again, open again the database, the color is blue or is green or red. It can be different. And it can be troublesome if you want to compare two databases because the color is different for the same function. And uh, we, we know this problem and uh, we'll, we will try to handle it in the future release. But as Karen uh, showed uh, previously, you can assign a routine or procedure to a specific colors. You can specify uh, MPI underscore star blue. So all the MPI function has blue color. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, example of NWCAM. I will do the demo on local machine. I don't have it here. So you can just click uh, from uh, the finder, the SPC viewer, and it will show uh, the, uh, will ask to open the database. I will show, we already see NWCAM. Now I will show the QMC pack. Uh, let's see the QMC pack in the trace view. So let's go back to the depth zero. In the depth zero, you can see there are two phases. The first is everything is idle except the main threads, uh, which is perhaps the QMC pack for uh, initialization or something like that. And the second phase is the computation and there's a lot of uh, parallel region. So if you look, go down, you can see a finer, finer uh, faces, not here. Here, you can see not only two faces or two regions, you can see one, two, three, four, five regions until uh, if you go deep in the call path, you can see finer and finer iterations in your program. And you can click the max depth to uh, the bottom of the call path. So it's already three. I will stop my uh, presentation if you have any questions. 3 p.m. Eastern time, maybe. I have to show one more thing, Lexono, which is uh, show the, the, the view menu. Right? Yeah. So, I will show the, the uh, color mapping. If, for example, uh, you want to know all the cost of open AP libraries or all cost of the scale yield or KMP something, you can TM star, KMP star with mm -hmm. black, for example, and Star yield 
spelled yield. And click OK. If you go to the statistic, it turns out that the OMP idle is cost 34% of the total cycle of total execution time. And OpenMP library like uh, KMP barrier, scaled yield, it cost 30% of the total execution time. But in general, 64% of the execution time are idle or is a waste. 64% is huge. So the majority are idle in this application. Any questions? Uh, you had mentioned briefly about how the, to see load balance easily. Um, could you review that one more time? Uh, that uh, is in the NWCAM database. I will show NWCAM database. So this is collected five or six years ago and uh, the database can, uh, the application can be much efficient right now. Here you can see that some process has very long GA destroy and some has very short GA destroy. This one is very short. Uh, I will make it bigger. So different process has different uh, execution time. Uh, some are very short, some very long. And you can see here uh, very clearly the load imbalance, for example. And if you click summary view, it's very clear uh, some process has very long uh, DGM kernel and some DGM kernel is very uh, short or uh, even, is, yeah, we very, very short. Is it, does it answer the question? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. So also sometimes the load imbalance is very small that you cannot see on the whole application. You have to zoom in. And here you can see different uh, execution time for different process. Some is very long, very short. And sometimes you have to go back. What's happened in the previous uh, execution? The previous execution is there's a lot of weight, MCA weight, which is not the same across the process, which cause others, uh, are, the next execution, which is the synchronization, very long. So waiting for others making uh, the the uh, GA barrier very long. So you have to go zoom. Sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, if you have just explained about this, but in the summary view, the bottom, uh, what that represents there? Yeah, that part, the oh, value. Yeah. Um, this is the summary view is the projection of the main view. So what happened is that we count the number of pixel in the main view and we project it here, the number. So if you, for example, hover the cursor here, you will see 2.1% is the in, in line from CCSD. It's just the projection, the number of calls uh, in the main view to the summary view. And the statistics is show the table of the summary view. This basically like that. So, so in Michael, let, me, let me interrupt for just a second. Can you uh, zoom in on that, that uh, sort of gray, that gray area for just a minute? This one? Just to, uh, the, the area that we're just pointing at. Um, so, so just zoom in and, and, and show that for like most of the display. Which gray area? I'm sorry. Uh, can I just take control of your yes. laptop for a second? There is a time axis that you could specify. So, so 
what I wanted to do was to just show you here. So what, what this shows is that like in the center, everybody is working on, on this particular computation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is like a hundred percent of them are working on it, but then over time, as we, as we start to leave this phase, then there's like a mix of the gray and a mix of the green. And so what you can see is that the fraction, it, it, it goes from being a hundred percent gray to being like 50% gray and 50% green to being like 2% gray. And so what you see here is that this is an indication of load imbalance as, as we're shifting from one phase to another. Okay, that it, it's, a, it's a, a function of imbalance of one of them is in like procedure F while the other is in procedure G. Okay, perfect. Th thank you very much. I mean, after using HPC toolkit for many years, I didn't pay attention to this and I didn't understood easily also what's going on in the summary view. Oh. So. Okay. So how, how do you tell what each color is? Is it just hovering or is it clicking or what? Sorry, can you repeat the question? There are two colors, a, a kind of lightish blue and a green. How, how do you know which procedure is it is? Oh, either you click or you, you let the cursor there and then it will show the tooltip of the function. So this is the number, the inline right at the top. Yeah. On the statistics list, thanks. And the tooltip in the summary view also show the, uh, oh, John, <laughs> working on it. Yeah, so I, I switched it so you can see that, that this represents the call path to get there. So if, if we were to select some function that actually has a name, okay, so it's it's all part of that one function, but then if we move down another level, then so there's so you you click on this, the the what what we see for the place that you click on is this shows you the call stack. So this is like the call to get hash block when called from here. Whereas if I click over here, then it shows me that this is the call to util get next val in this call chain. Okay, so these colors here represent a call chain. They, they're not like, like a, a legend for what the colors mean in, in this particular thing. The only color that we're, the, all, the only thing we're looking at here is a depth 13 in the view. And so we see is depth 13 at one point in time and you know depth 13 at another point in time on another rank. Does that explain? I don't think I understood that. Do you understand what I said now or, or, or no? You, you didn't understand no. what I was talking about? No. Okay, when you, when you click on a spot, what it shows you, so here I clicked on something that says rank 318. Mm -hmm. and, and now at that point, this represents the entire call chain that's active at that point in time at yeah. 300 and 320,000 milliseconds into the run, the call chain has this and I'm looking at it at like the middle depth. So if it was like main calls A calls B, then like I'm 13 levels deep and that's the procedure that's being executed. But if you wanna know where I really was, it's, I wasn't in get hash block, I was all the way down get hash block calls, get block calls, get calls, NGA get. And I was down inside the the Cray GNI layer, like waiting for a request to be satisfied as part of my call to get hash block. So you understand that this is a call chain and that represents that one place. Yes. Okay. Now, if I move over somewhere else, I get the call chain for what I was doing over here. And so this, the, the green refers to this highlighted color here. It's a depth 13 in, in both places. So we're looking at this, the whole application as a hierarchy of views. So at the top level. So you could change the depth at any time. You can change, yeah. you can change the depth by just clicking on something here. So this is now looking at it at depth four, and then I can look at it at depth eight, and then I can look at it at, at the bottom. 
and it's showing you like different levels of abstraction of what we're looking at. I think I understand. Yeah. Okay, now the summary view looks very weird. Uh, John, just one, uh, John, uh, a question related to the summary view again. In the summary view, the positions of the colors, for example, green at the bottom, then blue, and then yellowish green, does that represent anything there? You know, like if the green is at the bottom, does that mean anything related, relevant? I, I think the answer is no. Um, think of it as it's just whatever color ID is assigned. And then we always show the colors in the same sorted order. And then the, the height of the bands sort of is shallow here because there's little blue, but then it's like, it's like bigger here because there's lots of it, which means that there's a lot of this computation going on at this point in time. And it sort of peters out until there's like almost nothing. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I have a question. How do you deal with the fact that different threads have different call depths, even if they're in the same function? So like if I do a P thread, you know, a P thread create, and then it calls a function, but my main program was seven layers down and it called the function too. They're at completely different layers, but they're doing exactly the same thing. So that's an interesting question, Rishi. So, you know, in, in some sense, you know, you would like to normalize for that. And, and so I have a student, Lai Wei, who did a PhD thesis, and it would like, it would, it, it would take the, the viewer data and it would auto select which levels to show you at various points in time. And it would just, it would pick the things that were interesting to show you, like where there was imbalance and whatnot. That's not the version that we're running here, but that would address the question that you have. The other thing that we often do is to just say, to just hit this um, max depth thing. And like you look at it at the deepest possible level, because that's showing you where you really were like, what were you really doing? Okay. And then we look in the statistics pane and says, well, okay, so uh, GNI, CQ, get events. So that was like dealing with the request queue. So there's like a lot of activity where, where threads are dealing with the request queue and GA, DLA pro progress. So this is like the, the, the Gemini, um, uh, Craze Gemini fabric had a driver. And so this is the progress engine. And so there's a lot of time being spent on the progress engine, a lot of time checking the request queue. So looking at the bottom level, that tells you what you're really doing. And so that's always a good place to start is to look at the bottom. Okay, that makes sense. So if I just looked at the bottom, it doesn't matter from a depth five or 58 on different threads, it'll just show me where I am. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so John, uh, remember that if you're using the OpenMP tools, uh, library, then then the depths are matched up. Correct. Yes. So we didn't talk about the Open MT Tools library. That that talk's going to get deferred till Friday. Okay. So what you're saying is that if you compile it a certain way and link it a certain way, magic happens and it works out. Uh, if you're in an Open MP region. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's just say, Rishi, the, the answer is there is no magic bullet, but it's better. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. But what I'm well, saying is if you did a pragma open MP, it doesn't matter if the main thread was like 15 levels down at that, you know, the master thread. Everybody in the in the worker pool is at level two because they just called GOMP OMP function, whatever, but it'll fix it'll figure it out because it's part of the open MP library. That's exactly right. Yes. Another topic to cover on Friday. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Um, I was wondering uh, for Open ACC, are there any um, things that that you guys are doing specifically that apply to Open ACC versus um, Open MP GPU offloading or just Open MP normal? We are not doing anything specific for Open ACC. Basically, it just works, but you get the default view. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so I threw in some examples for, I threw in a Lulesh open ACC in the examples, and I hope it works. It got thrown in over the weekend. And so if it doesn't, I'll, I, I can take a look at it. And if it doesn't work, then 
I'll fix it so that it's something that you can look at um, before Friday, or it may it may work already. Not sure. 